Matsu Yurana was a librarian obsessed with books. She preferred them over anything else, even eating, until an earthquake proked her death by an avalanche of with books. Rano prays to God one last thing in her final moments to be around books in her next life. As she faded away into her present life, suddenly there was a child's voice that pleaded for help. But as Urano's voice grew stronger, the child's voice disappeared until Urano woke up in a strange room. Urano woke up as mine, a sickly five-year-old in a medieval-like world that's having an intense fever. Suddenly, a strange woman appears. At first, Urano didn't understand what the woman said. She quickly is bombarded by the memories of the previous child as she finally understands the strange language and recognizes that she's her mother. Her mother approaches her to tell her that her fever is still going, but she's finally awake and recovering, so she must rest. Then Tuli, her sisters, came into the room to also tell her to stay in bed while she and her mother do some chores. When they go out of the room, Mine decides to search for books to spend her time, and after she didn't find books in her filthy room, she decides to search outside, but it requires tremendous strength from her to even open a door, because she's little and fragile. The room next door was the kitchen and the living room, so she didn't find any even in the warehouse, only there was wood. As soon as she realizes there is no book, she logically thinks that this must be like the medieval times of her world where only the noble and the privileged ones can afford a book since they couldn't be mass-produced. Frustrated, Mine begins to cry as she realizes she won't have a book because she's poor. Three days pass and Mine completely recovered from her fever and struggled beforehand with the familiarity her family had as she didn't see her father as a father, but as a man that tried to change her clothes, she decided to let femininity and pewter apart to be in peace in this place. Also, she created a hairpin impressing her sister because of her intelligence but also making her doubt it since she thinks she looks like she has a stick encrusted in her skull. Afterward, her mother decides to go to the lower city market and Mine wants to go with her because that was the only opportunity to see if she can buy books or at least see them. At the market, she notices that there was an only numeral system just for pricing of products. As her mother carries her, she sees the place calmly until they stop near a butcher and he kills a hen which makes Mine faint from the blood. Later, she wakes up in a wood bench with her mother and she decides to stay in a local managed by a man. In that local, she sees a book behind a glass in a case and she asks the vendor to at least touch it, but he refuses and states that a noble already bought this book and that books are too valuable to let them be touched so freely. After these harsh words, Mine decides if she can't have books, she'll do them. Time later, Mine struggles with two things for family as she can't find any ink or paper in the lower market, and also because of the filthy conditions her family lives with. But when her sister Tule returns with an avocado-like fruit, she decides to use its oil for DIY homemade shampoo as in her old life as Urano, she used to make her hygiene products and has a vast knowledge of it. After using the product, both their mother and sister want to try it since it made Mine's hair glowy and smell sweet. Later, Tulei has to deliver their father his food at the city's gate. Mine wants to go, but her health is so fragile that even going out of the house is physically demanding and she can't go there by herself. Lucky for Mine, their neighbors arrive, Let's, Zeig, and Ralph. Then they offer their help to the girls and accompany them to the city gates. Mine goes in the back of Ralph and notices how he's complimenting Tuli and how also she's nervous since the boys praise her, as well because of their shining and fresh-smelling hair. At the city's gate, they deliver the food to Gunther, their father, who works there as a captain while they're there. The protagonist notices how a co-worker of her dad has a paper made from animal skin and ink. She asks her father for paper and ink, but he denies it as both of them cost a fortune and his salary can't afford it. But Otto, his co-worker, cheers up mine and offers to teach her. Time passes and the pork stocking festival begins even with her mother's warning because of what happened in the market mine insists on going and after being unable again to see blood she faints but she wakes up in the gates and is received by Otto who offers her his old chopboard and chalk to teach her. After her first lesson, mine learns fast how to write her name in this new language. Excited by this, she is still settled in her quest to make books. Winter has arrived and mine learns that winters in this world are pretty hard for commoners. Her first act in winter is to try to imitate the Egyptians and try to make papyrus paper like theirs, but it proves to be hard and even with Thule's help she gives up since it's a hazardous task, then she decides to wait for winter to be over to imitate the Mesopotamian people making clay boards to write. One day, her sister and father arrive with a sweet winter fruit named Paru whose leftover pulp is discarded to feed animals and birds, but since the winter is hard and food is scarce, Mine tries it and discovers that it's edible even when Thule is slightly disgusted because she stills consider it as feeds stock. Then her neighbors call her door to exchange food because they're struggling with it since they're a numerous family. They're welcomed in by both sisters, and they can see how Mine is cooking a new dish with the pulp of the food which is pancakes and the results are so good that everybody loves it alike. Afterward, Mine's chalk is over and she asks Gunther to go to the city's gate to ask Otto for more which makes Gunther jealous as she doesn't need him but he accepts anyways to carry her due to her poor health to the city's gate. Arriving at the gate, Gunther left Mine with Otto for her lessons warning him to take care of her or else. 
While they were in the middle of her lessons, Mine took a look into Otto's accountability work and notices that there are error in it and told Otto. Otto, realizing he can be helped since he's the only one to know math at the gate, asks Mine to solve those. In a few minutes, Mine achieves to solve them all, impressing Odo who asks Mine to do them for free. Mine, it's not a regular child, so she sees an opportunity and only will do it if Otto teaches her unlimited writing lessons and supplies her with chalk and Otto accepts even though it's illegal to give work to children without baptizing and employs her. Sometime later at home, Mine is seeing how her mother and Tuli are preparing the arrangements for Tuli's baptizing, so she decides to make some hair ornaments for Tuli. Then ask her father for help and ask him to create a crochet hook, which Gunther accepts delighted by her daughter's needs. After it, Mine crochets a flower hair ornament for Tuli, which she thanks for it since it doesn't exist in that world, and Gunther praises both of her daughters with affection for being good sisters. Spring arrives and Mine continues to delight her family with her inventions and occurrences. So Mine wants to go to the forest to continue her bookmaking project and make clay tablets, so Mine asks her father to let her go to the forest, however, he denies it, stating that she's too weak to do so. So he proposes she at least become Otto's assistant and go to the city's gate daily and he'll let her go when she gets enough strength to go by herself. So Mine goes daily, but her pace is too slow that everyone has to go at the pace of a turtle to accompany her until she gets to the gate. But shortly after she starts walking, she gets sick with a fever until the start of summer and her father let her go only with the other kids supervising her and with the condition that she can't make physical effort. Finally, that day arrives and Mine is finally able to get to the forest, so she starts to dig for clay, but her body is so fragile that it hurts. Suddenly, she's discovered by Lutz and he scolds her but helps her because of the Peru's pancake that helped him and his family in the struggling winter. They successfully create the first patch of clay tablets, but Lutz's brother and other kid mistakes it for a path of rocks and jump on them and destroys the first patch, making Mine frustrated. Her eyes color starts to change, but Tuli arrives and scolds the kids. A second batch is made with the help of the kids and Mine decides to let them dry overnight. In the morning when they came back, they found out the clay was destroyed by the rain so all of them make another batch that successfully dries and Mine was happy about it decided she'll write her mother's stories and hers. So at her home, she decides to bake the clay tablets, but because clay can only be baked without direct contact with fire, they explode, letting her with a mess at home. The summer passes and Erinfes and Tuli's baptism finally arrives and her hair ornament is a sensation since everybody notices it and they're curious about it. Gunther wants to accompany Tully to her baptism, but it's stopped by Mine since they both have to go to the city's gate. At the gates, Mine handles official matters while Otto was busy in a meeting and Gunther can't resist being jealous of Mine's attention. Later, Tully receives her first seamstress kit because she's now a seamstress apprentice and Mine gets a knife for carving wood. With this knife, Mine gets inspired by the wooden scrolls also named Moken from the Yellow River Civilization's culture, so she conveniently starts doing this for her books with the help of Lutz. While they're at it, Lutz requests her to arrange a meeting with Otto, since Otto was a trader before becoming a guard and Lutz wants to become a merchant. Mine talks with Otto and sets up a meeting, but also tries to ask him for ink, but he refuses since the ink is too expensive so Mine and Lutz make some crayons with mud. At home, Mine tries to search the wood tablets only to discover that her mother accidentally burns them. Overcome by anger and frustration, Mine's fever attacks her strongly again. Afterward, she's visited by Lutz who carves some with less flammable wood tablets for her and tries to encourage her, but once again Effa, her mom, burns her accidentally. Overcome by despair, Mine's fragile body is almost giving up on her quest and also her life, thinking about letting the fever win and die but Lutz's encouraging words and her promise to introduce him to Otto pass through her mind so she desists from this idea. After recovering, Mine reschedules Otto's appointment and opens up about her frustrations, but he cheers her up and teases her for being curious about who's the person she's gonna introduce to him. The day of the meeting comes and Mine wash lets his hair for him to be more presentable. With his best clothes, they reunite at the commerce area of Erenfest, and as they see Otto arrive, Mine is surprised that he invited his brother-in-law, Benno, an expert merchant that as soon as he sees Mine is delighted by her inventions and asks her about it, but Mine intelligently says it's a secret. While at it, Lutz tries to tell them his reasons for why he wants to become a merchant, but Otto interrupts him and tells him is ridiculous, since it means renouncing his citizenship, as merchants in that world can't have one to travel around places, so he suggests them to become merchant apprentices instead. Also, Benno asks them what other motives to become a merchant, but Lutz is a little bit nervous, but with Mine's help, he speeches about how he wants to be a merchant to make Mine's inventions a reality, and he'll sell them as merchandise. With this in mind, Mine explains her intentions to become a librarian, but first, she wants to develop a prototype of plant-made paper instead of animal skin paper. Asking for Benno's sponsorship and also making a deadline for the next year, the year of her baptism. Benno accepts and, as they're about to go, Mine retains them and asks if they knew something about her fever. They said that they don't, so Mine goes away sad about it. Secretly, Benno tells Odo that maybe is the devouring a lethal illness, and if that's so, it'll kill Mine soon. 
Later, Mine decides to use the washing method that she knew from her past life as Urano. Suddenly, she realizes that she doesn't have anything for the utensils required for the tools of this method, so she asks Otto for nails, and he tells her that he will give her nails in exchange for some of her shampoo for his wife, Corinna, Benham's younger sister. Otto accompanies her to his home, and she realizes how different is the poor part of the city compared to the normal one as she enters the building and sees how big the apartment is. They're received warmly by Corinna, and then Mine continues to her duty as she washes her hair. Corinna asks Mine if Otto is really happy about his life as a guard since he renounced his life as a merchant for her. So Mine assures her that he's still using his knowledge as a merchant at the gates and he's very happy about his job which makes Corinna happy about it. When Mine finishes washing his hair, Otto is overwhelmed by Corinna's beauty as both are highly pleased with the results. Then Otto in a hurry gives Mine her nails and ushers her out the door and sends her on her way to have some alone time with his wife. At home, Mine tells Tully and her family where she was and Tully is envious since Corinna is a famous seamstress in the whole city and also the best in the city. Later at the making of the washing method tool, Lutz confesses to Mine that his family is not convinced of him becoming a merchant's apprentice due to their distrust because they're all craftsmen, so they'll not let Lutz become a merchant. Sometime later, Otto finds them and gives them an invitation from Benno to become his apprentices, which they accept enthusiasts. The children meet Benno at the Gilberta's company, the same building Mine went to wash Corinna's hair. While in the meeting, Benno scolds Mine and Lutz because they have to go first to him to ask for supplies instead of Otto, since the Gilberta company wants to claim the sales for the paper they'll produce. Mine apologizes and bows, but Benno is perplexed since he isn't familiar with the gesture making Mine aware that this world has different manners and traditions to Japan. Then Mine tells him she wants to retain the production rights and wants to give Lutz exclusive sales rights for secure job security. With this expertise negotiation, Benno agrees and calls his assistant Mark and Benno tells them he'll fund all the supplies for their prototype in exchange for the shampoo's recipe, and that once the plant paper is developed, they'll receive 10% of the profits added to their pay as royalties. Mark asks the children to accompany him to seal the deal and Mine sees how there are not only signatures, but they have to seal the deal with blood as well to activate the magic. So Lutz helps Mine close the deal and magic contract as she can't stand seeing blood. While they're on their way home, Lutz distrusted Mine as she can be on equal footing with adults and do math without an abacus, and also that she was too much comfortable doing negotiations with the adults like she wasn't a four-year-old and ask her if she really is Mine. With this, Mine worries that if Lutz discovers Mine, he'll detest her. Time passes and Mine tries to do her business deals with Benno alone without Lutz, but the fever attacks her fragile body, making her ill again. So Benno scolds her and strictly demands Mine always be accompanied by Lutz and not to come to the store without Lutz. At night, Benno and Otto talk about Mine's illness and Benno explains that indeed is the devouring, an illness that's only presented in children that were born with mana and slowly kills them because they're unable to control it without an artifact that absorbs it or using it correctly, and how this maybe means that Mine will die the next year. Later at the communal well, Lutz tells Mine that he felt belittled by her way to talk about business and how he felt unneeded as Mine seemed like she could handle everything alone but declares that he doesn't hate her at all which eases Mine's worries, but also he no longer refers as her like Mine. They're reunited once again with Benno who gives them in studio in the south gate of the city to start the prototype. Then they visit lumber workers and carpenters and see the wood also Mine gives them detailed plans about the construction of the equipment which amazes the carpenters because they haven't seen anything like it before. A month and a half later, they go to the woods to obtain wood for their first prototype, while Lutz goes to collect firewood Mine accidentally picks up a tall fruit that suddenly transforms into a trom when she touches it. Seeing the plant grows frenetically, Mine asks for help and Lutz comes but calls his brothers and tackles the plant explaining to Mine that trom is an invasive species that kills everything in the forest. Later, Mine examines the plant and sees that's perfect to make the paper with. Lutz is more quiet around Mine and is suspicious about her knowledge of paper making, use of chopsticks, and sudden knowledge about everything something that a kid from this world wouldn't normally know. Once they finish the first batch of paper, Lutz confronts Mine about who she really is and Mine finally admits that she's not the original Mine, that the real one died a long time ago. This outrages Lutz who demands to give Mine back to him and her family but Mine tells him that she'll gladly do it since she didn't invade on purpose her ill body and she was only there because of Lutz's encouragement words. But if she does it, only a corpse will remain. Saying this, Lutz reacts and asks her how long she has been mine, and when she answers this, he realizes that the memories he has are with this mine, not the other one, so he forgives her and accepts who she is. Then together, they bring the first batch to Benno, who compares it to the skin animal made and is amazed at how it's ten times better, but also with the fact that it was made with Trom, which makes him approve of the quality of the paper. Also, that means that he'll get them as his apprentices. Benno then pays their respective royalties of the paper, and after that, Mark explains to them the monetary system of this world. A small bronze coin is worth 10 leon, and 10 of them are equal to one medium bronze coin. 10 of medium bronze coins are large bronze coin, 
that means are one small silver and so goes on until a big gold coin. Then Mine shows him her crochet hair ornament which amazes Benno, and tells them to go to the merchant guild to register temporary guild cards, which will allow them to do business even without their respective baptism. But at the guild, they're rejected as they can't do that, so Benno requests a meeting with the guild grandmaster since it's an urgent matter. While Awaite Mine sees a map of the city of Arenfess and Benno explains to her that the city divides in three. The commoners and business locals share a mutual area even if they're separated by the looks of both districts, but the nobles are completely separated from both of them by a divisor wall, and they only live in mansions and they don't like being involved or near poor people. They're finally told to enter the guildmaster's room, and when they're explaining the situation, the guildmaster isn't inclined to approve their guild cards since it's illegal, and there's no security that they'll be merchants. But all of this changes when Benno tells Mine to show him her hair ornament and the guildmaster opens his eyes like plates as he was searching for the whole city, all the seamstresses, and he was so eager to find the person who crafted that ornament since his granddaughter Freda wants it. Upon seeing this, he finally accepts and tries to hire Mine, which is firmly refused by Benno alleging that he already hired Mine. After this, they're accompanied by Mark and open their first accounts and deposit some money for future savings. Then he approves his registration and orders a hair ornament for Mine, but Mine suggests to him that's better to see what clothes Fredo will wear to craft a proper hair ornament. At home, Mine is happy since her family is proud of her income, but unlike her family, Lutz is having trouble with his since they won't accept any of his money since they are still against him becoming a merchant. Sometime later, the appointment for Freda's ornament is here and Mine and Lutz went together to seal the deal. Frida welcomes him warmly and praises Mine's intellect. After that, she and Mine start to discuss her outfit design as its red Mine decides that that's better to do a combination of colors, but also points out that because of her two ponytails, she may need two, and at first she considered letting the other one for free, but lets us intervene and tells her that the other one would be half price because she's a customer. Delighted by this, Freda asks Mine to work for her, but Mine firmly refuses. Later, when they reunited with Benno, he scolds them and calls them stupid since the guild grandmaster swims in money, so it has no sense to them to lose money and material being kind to a person they barely know because people then will start demanding the second one for free. Also, let's compare Freda with Mine saying they're total weirdos being obsessed with one thing, Freda with money and Mine with books. This was like a heavy truth for Mine since she thought it was normal to be desperate for something. One month later, the hair ornaments are completed and both Freda and her grandfather are delighted with the beautiful results. For some reason, Lutz tells Mine as becoming late and Mine explains that she has to go because of her frail body. Frida asks if she has the devouring when Mine states that she doesn't know what is it Frida explains to her that's a sickness that afflicts calmer children since they don't have enough money to pay for magic tools that can drain mana, and it is only activated when despair or sadness overcome the person. This worries Mine since now she knows that she'll die soon due to her not having money for the treatment, but thanks to Freda for the information. A year has passed since Mine awakened in this world, and now the fever is recurring, but she's handling it like it's a vault trying to explode. She has to jump on it to maintain the energy there, but she still becomes ill more often than before. As winter approaches, Benham assigns Lutz and Mine to improve their manners, their appearance, and their reading and writing skills. Lutz is worried about it since Benham says the appearance was the most important part and its value for a suit could be 10 silver coins. Lutz is worried because he thinks he doesn't have the money, but Mine remembers him the day they opened the membership account. They left the money there so they can use it, which relieves Lutz. He also asks for Mine's help troubleshooting the production method of the shampoo. It resulted that the handkerchief used for the shampoo was made from silk instead of cotton, which is more granulated so it gave better results. After that, she's called by Benno to his office. Benno and Mine negotiate a deal for any information she can provide about the shampoo. He offers her two small golds, but she negotiates for three, and he agrees only if she starts saving money for her treatment. Also, Benno starts to doubt Mine's identity since it's not normal for a child from commoners to have such vast knowledge and Mine just remains silent so he doesn't pressure the issue since she's reluctant to explain. Also in her home, her mother and Thule start working as well for her good. Even better, Thule and Ephra start to work harder when Mine promises them two medium bronzes for each hair ornament, which also motivates Gunther to start working as well. Also, Mine advises Lutz to do the same for his brothers to maximize production. At the well, Lutz's mother expressed to Effa how she's worried about Lutz becoming a merchant as craftsman. Don't trust these people, but Effa tells her that she has no to worry since Benno is a man of trust and also Lutz is capable of maintaining his personality, but Lutz's mother is still in trouble with this even quiet. Time later, Gunther brings Mine to the gates and suddenly a Trom attacks they have to go to kill it. So Mine sees an opportunity to collect Trom's wood with Lutz. After collecting wood with Lutz, she makes steamed potatoes for both of them which delights Lutz as he never has eaten before. While finishing the paper process and ordering the tool, Mine has a sudden fever attack. 
Let's ask her what's happening and she finally admits that she's flaring up more often than before but ask him not to worry about her. On her way home, Mine has an intern monologue about how Lutz is such a good guy and feels guilty about making her feel bad so she tells him not to worry if she faint but Lutz breaks down in tears while walking as he feels unhelpful because he can do nothing to prevent her friend's death. Later, they meet with Benno and he asks Lutz to talk privately. Lutz pleads to Benno to help Mine since he can't do anything but Benno refutes it as he scolds Lutz saying that Mine is mature enough to not show her distress in front of him so if he's gonna help her he got to put his pants and mature himself too and not worry her with his problems at all. The next day, Mine and Lutz reunite once again with Benno to sell the hair ornaments but suddenly, the fever attacks Mine and she faints with no possibility to move so Benno orders Mark to get a carriage and go out as fast as they can. When Mine heard the first sentence of emergency, she couldn't listen to anything anymore. Until the protagonist felt something draining the energy inside the chest, once again she started to gain hope, asking a strange energy ball to eliminate all of that energy to her being healthy again. As she wakes up, she notices she's in a fancy room with a broken bracelet. Mine's thoughts are suddenly interrupted by Frida, who states that that bracelet is a magic tool only nobles can buy and she broke it because of her accumulated magic energy. While they talk, Mine asks Frida how much time she has until the devouring starts attacking once again and Freda reluctantly tells her that she has one year until she could die. With this in mind, Freda advises Mine to take two actions, perish with the people she loves or marry a noble, which Frida is currently doing. She explains that her grandfather gave her hand to the best offers available, which was her becoming a concubine but being able to still work as a merchant in the noble district. Mine is worried about this but also because Frida explains to her that commoners like both of them cannot buy magical items for this so she can't expect doing all by herself. With this in mind, Mine sleeps again in this comfy bed. It's morning and Mine is having breakfast with Frida and her grandfather. She is thankful for them giving her the bracelet, which the guild master says, free, you have to pay for it. This shocked Mine which made her ask how much the bracelet cost and Freida told her three gold coins but they didn't expect that Mine could afford that because of the ideas she sold to Benno, which Mini Mine is grateful for as Freida stated that if she couldn't afford it, she would have become their apprentice. Mine's parents and Lutz visit Mine and are grateful for Freida's help. Also, Freida states that Mine will stay for her that night to heal completely as she can see Mine is still weakened by the sickness because she has the disease as well. As they go, Lutz tells them he is gonna inform Benno of Mine's state, while Effa is surprised that Mine's sickness is called the devouring. After this, Mine and Freda, along with Frida's maid, bake a cake only her maid since both of them were pretty weak. This makes Frida and her maid excited about the delicious flavor and ask Mine about the recipe and her patent. Later, Mine and Freida bath in a beautiful sauna and Freida tells Mine that her grandfather built this like it was a noble home bath since he visited a lot of them while visiting them because he was the guild grandmaster he could afford to have contact with nobles without repercussions. Mine then tells Freida that her grandfather loved her. Freida answers that she is only an investment from her grandfather which saddens Mine but Mine is profoundly moved by Freida's optimism. As a thanks, Mine wash Freida's hair with a shampoo which makes both of them go to sleep immediately. The next day, Mine thinks about how important her family has become to her as she sees Freida going to her baptism, which makes Mine remember Tuli and tear up. When they arrive, Freida tells them to have dinner with them, but Mine asks her mother to cook for her, and they go after thanking Freida one more time. Tuli is sad since she wanted to eat rich people's food, but they're all laughing in the end by the goofy side of his father. Some time passed, and all this time she planned her last months like she was going to die next winter as she sold her paper right to Benno, but retained Lutz's sales right remain also refusing to be an apprentice of the Gilberta's company as the work is demanding and her fragile body cannot afford the workflow. Also, Lutz's mother finally confronted him, but it resulted in her cheering him up by finally accepting him becoming an apprentice. Mine and Lutz then go to the Gilberta's company and are received by Mark who welcomes them with a spring festivity salute as they try it with Benno only for Lutz being the only one saying correctly of the two. Immediately after that, Mine cancels her apprenticeship with Benno, but he suggests she make her studio, which resulted in the creation of Mine's studio. Afterward, Mine, Benno, and Lutz are heading to the forest while Benno is piggybacking Mine. They encounter Gunther, who is jealous of Benno piggybacking his daughter, but he says who he is, and the jealousy is exchanged with gratefulness, and Otto laughs because Benno looks like a dad with both of the children. As they go, Mine is surprised that Benno is single being a bachelor, which Benno replies that he's single since he was taking care of Corinna, and after being free, the love of his life died, and now he'll die alone because he can't find anybody like her, which makes her mind pet him like a dog for comfort. Later, Mine explains to Benno the whole paper process and ensures Lutz apprenticeship. Also, Freda is surprised by Mine's decision to die on her family's side instead of becoming a noble's wife. So Freda decides to buy her pound cake recipe and Mine accepts with the condition that if she's alive, the recipe will be public one year later, but Freda replies to her, that if she doesn't want her recipe to be monopolized, she has to be alive one year more. That's how spring passed and summer arrived, thus Mine's baptizing as well as she turned seven. 
She wears Thule's modified dress and a brand new flower hair ornament to the ceremony, earning high praise from the neighbors. Benno also attends the baptism to watch Lutz and Mine, and because on the baptizing day, Mine looked like a rich folk, Benno is shocked to see another hair ornament design. At the church entrance, someone jokes about Lutz and Mine being like a mini couple going to marriage, which worries Gunther as he screams her name. At church, they are welcomed by the priests who pin their fingers and notice Mine's appearance. Next, the ceremony begins, and Mine is delighted by the mythology and religion. Also by the beautiful book the high priest had but almost dies of laughter when they do the Gilko pose from Japan to praise their gods. Because everyone thought Mine's illness was attacking her due to Lutz being kind, she's put in a fancy room. While she goes out, she finds a library and prays to the gods, but an invisible force doesn't let her enter, so she requests to enter, but the priest with the gray robe tells her that the only way to access the library is by being a priestess. As she tells her, she guides her with a major priest that believes Mine she's a noble, so he asks Mine for a donation. Mine tells them she'll donate one large gold coin, which amazes the priest and tells her to be her parents if they do not agree with her becoming a priestess. Mine recovers in the cathedral's waiting room, and Lutz comes to check on her. He's exasperated to find that the reason for her collapse was getting overexcited about books and hurries her to go back home before she does anything else reckless. At her home at dinner time, Mine talks about the elephant in the room and tells her family her intentions of becoming a priestess, which her father severely refuses. He explains to her that commoners that become priests turn into a gray robe and are severely mistreated by blue robes ones and their work is brutal. Also that even with the brutal workforce, they are all unwanted children, so they don't have any rights. With all of that, Tuli and Effa also add that if she becomes a priestess, she will not have any access to the outside world, and also she won't be able to meet them any further. This makes Mine worried but also disappointed, and moments later, after the heated discussion, she collapsed due to her fever. After it, Benno confronts Mine to come clean about her intentions, and Mine tells him everything that happened. Benno also warns Mine, but he tells her that if it's her wish, she then has to make a deal for them, as the deal would be her being able to work outside with them and with Lutz being her scold. Lutz escorts Mine back to the cathedral several days later after she has recovered. There she encounters the head priest, the second highest authority in the church under the high priest. It's a sign to read to her out of the scriptures, but she asks to be able to read the book herself as well. He allows it on the condition that she doesn't touch the pages. She is overjoyed and quickly learns several words, impressing the head priest who is amazed at how young she is. The high priest arrive and they begin to discuss. As their reunion goes by, Mine tells them that she can't join the church because she has the devouring and both the high priest and the head priest start to search for things and pray finally, the head priest brings a goblet and asks Mine to touch it. The goblet started to shine and because of the touch and scares Mine. Then the high priest and the head priest both agree to each other and tell Mine to bring her parents to meet them and give her a letter about it. At the exit, Lutz asks Mine if she did a mistake and Mine agrees as she is worried about it won't go as smoothly as she thought at first. Mine discusses the church's letter as she explains that entering the temple under the right conditions could allow her to treat the symptoms of her devouring by giving mana to the church. Gunther agrees that it's a good plan to ensure her survival, but Tuli is very worried about trying to negotiate her treatment with the nobles, since there were cases that nobles killed commoners only for trivial disputes or pleasure, and she doesn't want her family to be killed. At the temple, they meet the high priest who, after seeing Mine's parents enter, becomes arrogant and rude to them. When Mine starts to discuss her demands, the high priest dismisses her and tells her to shut up since she's not a noble and a poor commoner, so he orders his servants to capture her. Gunther defies this attitude and starts defending Mine, but a more gray robe priest appears and it looks inevitable the death of her parents. Angry, Mine starts to lose her temper and use her mana to strangle him and the head priest tries to talk sense to her since she's crushing the high priest's heart and it could lead to her parents being accused of murder while he's being damaged by Mine as well. After this talk, he also tells her that they're going to discuss her demands and then Mine immediately stops and the high priest is almost being helped by the gray robes. Afterward, the head priest discusses this with Mine's parents. Later, we see Tulai waiting for her family along with Lutz, who is waiting for Mine, and the yell of Mine with her family makes her happy as the family is reunited and safe. Mine is eager to join the cathedral as an apprentice blue-robed priestess, but she has to wait several weeks while preparations are made. In the meantime, she's so excited to finally read books that Tule has to remember her to sit and calm down to prevent Mine from becoming feverish again. She has a flashback to how the head priest accepted all her demands which are staying with her family, being treated like and noble and even having Mine's studio with the excuse of it giving employment to the orphans. Then she visits the Gilberta company, where Lutz has begun working as a merchant apprentice. Under Mark's tutelage, he practices welcoming customers to the store and using formal manners. Mine mocks him initially but asks for a hair ornament to help him practice his manners and Mark thanks her for that. She tells Benno about her successful negotiations for joining the church. She'll be allowed to live at home, rest when she's ill and continue running her studio. 
Her duties will be to serve as a custodian of the library and magical artifacts at the cathedral. Benno comments that the head priest seems like someone she can rely on for help since he seems like the only reasonable person around. On her way back downtown, Maya meets Lutz's mother, Carla, and tells her how hard she is working at his new apprenticeship. However, she keeps her own plans to join the church secret because of Benno's and her family's recommendations since people downtown don't like the church's practices. Instead, she shares the cover story that she will continue working as Otto's assistant and helping her mother around the house. Carla also mentions that a man was asking questions about her downtown and that worries mine since nobody knows about her studio besides the people in Gilberta's company and Lutz. Gunther and Otto go out for drinks where they celebrate the pregnancy of his wife, Corinna. Gunther points out that Otto is going to retire from being a guard and Otto explains that Gilberta Company is so busy selling Mine's products that they need him to help out with the business and jokingly calls Mine Benno's flu train, which concerns Gunther for a reason. They also talk about how Gunther is not 100% sure of letting Mine in the church, but she's going to live if it's like this, so Otto relieves him by telling him that he can watch the walls and see what kind of persons are entering in the city. In the corner of the bar, the man that's following Mine is overhearing the whole conversation. Time later, while visiting Gilberta's company, Mine tells Benno the rumors about a man investigating her downtown. He guesses that it's the same person who broke into the Merchants Guild a few days before and stole only Mine's studio file. After that, Tuli, Effa, and Mine go to show Corinna her altered baptismal dress and gain her insight on the new hair ornament and then sell Benno the rights to produce hair ornaments. Time later, Benno surprises Mine at Frida's pound cake taste event, and he's even a little angry about Mine not sharing her yummy recipes with him, but she replies that he doesn't have either an oven or a chef to make those recipes, and also that the cost of a recipe is one large gold coin, which makes cough Benno. So Freida and Liz mock him with a rivalry, so he just tells Mine that he will get a chef in an oven, if that's the only thing that it takes for her to share her recipes. At home, Mine imagines opening an Italian restaurant and is happy about it. The next day, the head priest reports to the high priest about Mine's background and activities, advising him to allow her to continue her business. He also explains his plans to assign his retainers to Mine. To his dismay, the high priest responds by spitefully assigning her one of his retainers, as well as the biggest troublemaker in the orphanage. When Mine arrives, she's welcomed by the head father and it's headed to her first ceremony, but she notices that she's in a hostile environment, so she worries about it. The head priest guides Mine through her oath-taking ceremony and gives her a set of blue robes to wear at the cathedral. He then introduces her to her new retainers, Frandelia and Gil, scolding her to maintain the attitude and formality expected of her position as she's humbly saluting them. As soon as the head priest leaves the room, Gil begins arguing with her. While Delia admits she only took the position as a way to warm her way into the high priest's favor and become his concubine. Frank impatiently tells Mine that it's her duty to discipline her retainers. Mine threatens to replace them, but her words leave no impression at all. She wonders how she's supposed to adjust to her new and unfamiliar life as a priestess, because downtown is nothing like this. On Mine's first day at the cathedral, the head priest briefs her on the duties expected of her, including helping him with paperwork as his assistant and Mine knew that the one investigating her was him since he knew about her work at the gates. He shows her how to dedicate mana using the church's shield of Schutzeria and she feels much lighter and more comfortable after giving away some of her mana, and he's impressed as Mine could light seven stones. Afterward, the meeting is over and Mine is eager and headed like a missile to the library even ignoring the retainers that are being rude to her except Fran. She decides to ignore them and settles down to read blissfully. Gil tries to rouse her from her book to go eat lunch, but she tells him to eat without her. When he insists on using force, she unleashes her mana on him and warns him to leave her alone which makes Fran clean the room in a hurry. Afterward, they're still being rude to her so she starts acting like that as well. After spending the whole day reading, Mai meets Lutz at the gate and Fran also follows her but Mine tells him to stay there since she has Lutz already. Her other retainers expect to come along with her and are startled when she tells them to stay behind. Gil runs off, saying that he wants to go get food. Mine asks Dilia to let the head priest know about the donation, saying that Benno will bring the donation when he has free time, forcing Fran to stay behind to make sure the message gets delivered. Next, she walks across the town to the Gilberta's company building and Benno is furious that she walked from the temple in her blue robes, putting her at risk of being mistaken for a noble and kidnapped. While she's there, seeing Lutz work so hard to succeed at his merchant apprenticeship makes her realize that she needs to put more effort into her work as an apprentice priestess. Mine said as she told the head priest they'd bring the donation to the cathedral as soon as it was ready, not realizing that it would be understood as, we'll bring it once. Benno and Mark rush to get ready, and they arrive at the cathedral in formal clothing in the frontal gates, 
which surprises mine as they don't seem like the principal entrance because their nobles arrives. Mine begins using formal language to talk to Fran and notices that he seems to warm up to her. As they walk to the head priest's office, Benna warns Fran that he's walking too fast for Mine to keep up, and he agrees after a moment of surprise apologizing since he didn't notice Mine couldn't keep the pace. The head priest asks Benno about Mine's character and personality when they deliver the donation. Benno says carefully that she's magnanimous, or at least indifferent, as long as no one tries to harm her loved ones or her books. Benno also warns that she's extremely sickly, causing the head priest to instruct Fran to learn how to manage her health mind also states that if he wants to learn more about her state he could talk to Lutz about it, and while they're talking mine imagines a box fight between Benno and the high priest. Many Benno is cornered in the ring after the head priest asks about her nickname in the town specifically about the rumors that mine is Benno's train, a common colloquialism for lover causing him to spit out his tea in dismay. He assures him that mine is merely his protege and Mark explains that in this context, flu train just means someone who brings new ideas and profit and the head priest finds sense to it. Just as the head priest wants to discuss the church's donation from Mine's business ventures and the fierce gaze of Benno and Mine's imagination, let us know that Benno was a fierce negotiator. They settle on 10% of profits for the church and Mine collapses, suddenly making the head priest demand her to stand up, but Benno interrupts and tells him that this is normal in her because she's frail, which makes Ferdinand concerned, and Benno carries her with delicacy. Fran chases them while they're going out of the temple and also apologizes to her for not serving her while explaining that he initially felt hurt that the head priest cast him aside as he didn't understand that his purpose was to make Mine understand the protocols and the behavior of nobles. She assures him that his former master still values his service and promises to do her best for him. Meanwhile, Delia reports to the high priest everything that's happening and is rewarded with food, while Gil is denied it since he already has a master. The next morning, Lutz drops Mine in the gates and she's received by Fran, but also Gil and Delia. While Fran received her warmly, Gil didn't being resentful with her and Delia runs off to the high priest at her first opportunity. Angry at being ignored because Mine is angry by him, Gil grabs Mine's shoulder and she falls over but Lutz catches her in time. In response, Lutz immediately tackles him and starts shouting at him, while Fran tries to calm down the water, Mine thinks about how different is here unlike downtown because this attitude would mean a beating but violence isn't allowed in church. She asks Lutz to stop. When he does, Gil angrily says that Mine has failed him as a master by not providing for his daily needs, the alm of the gods which confuses Mine but Fran explains to her that that's the leftovers of the blue robes and it's sent to the orphans and servants. While Fran and Delia have food and shelter from the head priest and high priest respectively, Jill has no one to help him. Mine is startled to realize that she overlooked something so important and promises to take responsibility because she still lived in her house she couldn't see this. Mine heads to the head priest's office to help him with his paperwork and scandalizes him by changing into his blue robes in his office. She says she'd happily change elsewhere if he'd give her somewhere to do it. The Grey Priest Arno suggests she take the orphanage director's office, which is currently empty and the head priest agrees. Meanwhile, Mine tells Guile to clean the office for her to give him food which Guile accepts while Mine and everyone are outside doing their duties. The idea of compensation is novel to Gil, but he agrees to try his best and he has the bedroom immaculately clean by the time Mine arrives. She pats his head and praises him and Jill is moved to tears. Elsewhere, Delia is scolded by the high priest because of her absence as Mine's retainer he failed to inform him about her getting the orphanage's director's office, so he kicks her out of his chambers. Mine gives Fran and Gil town clothing so they can join her when she walks downtown. They grab lunch at a street vendor. Mine and Lutz are bemused by Gil and Fran's unusual habits, such as saying grace and waiting until those at higher status finish eating to begin a meal with this Mine orders them to start eating and Gil is pleased with it. Then Gil is taken aback by how differently things work downtown compared to in the cathedral, and he apologizes for mocking Mine before. Later they visit Benno and Mine tells him that in the office she has an oven so Benno is ecstatic to learn that Mine now has an oven thanks to moving into the orphanage director's chambers. He sends his two recently hired cooks, Hugo and Ella, to practice cooking at the cathedral, and joins Mine for lunch to taste test their new recipes. The food turns out to be delicious, and Fran then takes the leftovers to the orphanage. Just then, Delia bursts in and accuses Mine of getting her in trouble with the high priest. Gil tells her that she who does not work, neither shall she eat, and Mine agrees with that. So Delia, who is used to being asked to entertain male guests, tries to flirt with Benno, but he pushes her away. Desperate not to go back to the orphanage, she begs Mine to give her some work to do. Mine agrees to provide for her as long as she does her job. Some time has passed and every retainer is working, while that Mine asks Gil to guide her to see the orphanage and the alm of the gods, but when they arrive there she's shocked by the state of the orphans and after she's being dragged by one she screams, Gil acts fast and closes the orphans once again but Mine faints due to the shock. Mine learns that the cathedral dismissed the previous priestess of the orphanage, forcing the children to exist aimlessly and starving, surviving off the leftovers Gil provides them. 
Though she wants to help, she doesn't have enough funds or means to do so, nor the church's approval, but also the self-esteem to bear such a duty. Later that day, Mine and Fran meet with Lutz and discuss the problem, only for Lutz to come up with the idea to turn the orphanage into a working branch of their papermaking studio, so they go to Benno's place to also have security about the plan. With Benno's approval and advice, Mine talks directly to the head priest who signs with his head to accompany him revealing a secret room. Mine is surprised by it, and he tells her that it is to prevent eavesdropping and only people with his quantity of mana could enter this room. However, he begins by reprimanding her for her lack of noble decorum and to be wary of retainers and other blue-robed priests who are loyal to the high bishop. The head priest interrogates her as he uses the description of Benno, someone indifferent unless threatened by her family or books. So he asks why she wants this position being it's so difficult to manage which mine answers that she couldn't read books in peace, having in mind the livid image of starving children. He then accepts her request to be orphanage director before revealing that he, like mine, joined the church later in life for personal reasons and also leaving a hint that he's not 100% comfortable with the current church's state. With the support of her retainers, Mine heads over to the orphanage and officially begins her role as director opening the gates of the orphanage and feeding the children who finally can see the light of life and also the child labor. Under the leadership of Mine, Fran, and Gil, the orphanage is rebuilt and establishes the rule of rewarding those who work. We're introduced to Wilma, a priestess, that loves to take care of the children and other ones. The children go foraging for paper supplies in the forest with Gunther and Lutz and are rewarded by Mine for their productivity and hard work, mostly with delicious food. Mine's three retainers are gifted slates and pencils to practice their writing, while the rest of the children were given flashcards to play with made of the wood they collected in the forest, which Benno quickly buys the rights to since it looked like a fantastic idea. As well, Mine tries to teach the children how to search for their food in the forest and cook it too. While on a walk with Lutz, Mine learns that Lutz and his brother Sieg have grown distant because he ignored his brother in the carpentry where his brother works. That Lutz tells Mine that the annual Star Festival is approaching, though Mine is curious if the orphans can attend, so she plans with Lutz bringing them to town. When she asks the high priest about this, he informs her that the temple is open to the townspeople during the festival, and that the orphans are not allowed to go downtown that makes Mine sad, but he said that they would normally be kept quiet and allows them to partake in the town's festivities of throwing fruit at each other within the temple grounds as long as they don't cause any problems to the visitors and damages in the temple. When the day of the ceremony arrives, they're all happy because they collected all the tough fruit with hard work. However, the fruit that was collected suddenly turns into a pod of trom sprouts when touched by Mine. Lutz and the orphans quickly slay the predatory plant, then proceed to throw the fruit at one another to celebrate, but because of the trom, some tiles are damaged and rose. At the end of the day, Mine ends up sick and is carried home by Fran. When she returns to the temple, the high priest reveals that the temple grounds required some repair from the celebration, and that he knew of the trom attack, forcing Mine into detention for breaking her promise, though Fran's protest fell on deaf ears when the headmaster opened the detention room they found Mine collapsed on the floor weakened and Fran repeated that Mine's health is fragile, that this was the exact thing he wanted to prevent, and then the headmaster understood the real frailty of Mine's health. Time later, Mine got sick and is in bed again when Lutz's brother, Ralph, came with Thule into the room and then she finds out that Lutz is being refused permission to travel with Benno to another town for work and ran away from home, cut off all contact with his family, and no one knows where he is. So Mine tells him where Lutz works and Thule is disappointed that Ralph didn't know where Lutz work. His brother Ralph goes after him to tell him to come home, but he ends up causing a scene. The same thing happens, Lutz's mother tries to come to bring him home, and the other Gilbert Company apprentices begin to get frustrated with Lutz and his relatives. Later, Mine recovers from her illness, she goes to the office and discovers that Benno is considering adopting Lutz as his son, so that he can devote his life to the business, and also that Lutz is living in Benno's attic, but she tells him that she will support him no matter what and that she will find a solution. At the temple, she struggles to focus on her accounting work with the head priest, so he stops her and tells her that he first needs to fix his calculator, referring to Mine, so they go to the manor room. When Mine exposes the issue, he proposes to bring Lutz's parents to the cathedral, so they can sign away Lutz for adoption if the problem can't be fixed through dialogue. Before the event, the headmaster gives Mine an item where she could only speak to him and he to her, meaning that she would have no voice in the issue. The parties arrive and are involved and are brought before the head priest for discussions, including Lutz, his parents, and Benno. At first, Lutz's father is a little problematic as he can't express himself properly and his mother tries to explain what he meant sometimes. The most shock came when Benno proposed the adoption and outrages her mother not making her angry but crying as she states that they would never accept the adoption. The talks take a turn and it is revealed that Lutz's parents actually supported his choices, even though it was against their wishes and only want him to be safe and to grow up strong. Lutz apologizes for everything and Benno decides to swap his adoption idea to instead change Lutz's contract to a Lehro contract and raise him as his successor in the Merchant Guild, to which everyone agrees. 
Let's reunite with his family while Mine cries tears of joy for everything turning out well even without her interference. The head priest offers her his handkerchief, and she finds out from the embroidery on its hem that his real name is Ferdinand. Time passes and Effa, Mine's mother, is expecting a baby. Mine is delighted by it and decides to make a book for the baby, specifically a picture book. So she asks the head priest to make Wilma her retainer, but the head priest denied it as he tells Mine that she should be learning music instead of doing this. Mine replies that she doesn't has an instrument, so the head priest let it go. But he explains that because mana is typically inherited from the mother's side of the family, she will be targeted by nobles for her high mana capacity as soon as she comes of age. Learning how to behave like a noblewoman is her best defense in securing a better match and better treatment. Fran recommends the Grey Priestess Rosina, a gifted musician who studied under Christine, to be her harspiel tutor. After that, the head priest gifts her a harspiel, a string instrument, and later Ferdinand then shows Mine how to play the first few notes on the instrument and is surprised when she picks it up quickly, and that gives Mine more pressure to learn the instrument faster as he is eager to see her play. When she goes to the orphanage to ask Wilma to be her retainer, she denies it and doesn't give a proper reason. Mine thinks is concerning but doesn't think about it too much. So she goes to the office of the head priest to report the situation to Wilma. At the office, Ferdinand tells Mine that now is the perfect moment for learning how to play music, so he tells her to pick Rosina. So she goes to do it. Rosina enters Mine's service. However, it soon becomes apparent that she expects to have a privileged position as a music tutor, rather than sharing in the daily work of Mine's other retainers. When Delia angrily asks Mine to do something about it, she goes to Wilma to ask why Rosina thinks she's superior to other grey robes and Wilma explains to her that Christine, her previous master valued above every retainer that has a special talent for arts, in her case was painting and drawing but in Rosina's case was music, so they both had a special treatment while they were with her. As Christine had to fulfill noble obligations and left Wilma, realized that the special treatment they had only was with her and no one else was gonna repeat it, so she asked Mine to be patient with Rosina, and that she will realize sooner or later. Later Mine holds a meeting with all her retainers and explains the situation of Rosina, as she can't allow a retainer that doesn't work but also interrupts the labor of others. Rosina defended herself by stating that she's a musician so she can't have forced labor or her finger would be damaged so Mine tells her that she would only have paperwork and cooking, giving her an ultimatum whether she decides to go back to the orphanage or she continues to play under these conditions. The next morning, Rosina tells Mine that she decides to play and work so ironically after the decision Ferdinand gives Mine an appointment where he would see her play in 10 days. For the next 10 days, Mine rushes to master her first song on the harspiel in preparation for Ferdinand's review. Thanks to Rosina's help, she passes the test with flying colors. Later, Rosina explains to Mine that Wilma was once taken advantage of by a blue priest. The traumatic experience left her uncomfortable around adult men, which is why she prefers not to leave the girl's wing of the orphanage. Mine decides to create a children's version of the church's holy scriptures so that both her upcoming newborn sibling and the orphans can read it. However, she runs into an obstacle when she realizes ink is both expensive and in short supply because there's only one type of ink. While she's thinking about what ink to use, Benno asks Lutz to translate everything she's saying and Lutz do so. And after Mine finished babbling her ideas, she asks Lutz to become them a reality. Also, she gathers a meeting with the orphanage's kids to tell them a story, but it resulted that nobody has ever seen a pig or a wolf or normal things that Mine would have, so she decides to make the Holy Scripts version for kids, which Ferdinand approves. Instead, she decides to make her own using oil and soot from the church fireplaces, gathering the attention of Ferdinand, who questions her about the grey robes cleaning the chimneys way earlier this year and demands her not to gather too much attention as it can be prejudicial for her. As everyone gathers enough to gather soot, she gives Lutz instructions to create oil-based ink and to Wilma to illustrate, which she then carves into a wooden block and uses as a base for printing. However, the detailed art doesn't translate well to the page as the whole page goes black and it's difficult to read at a simple glance for even persons that know how to read. Meanwhile, Wilma is struggling to reconcile her fear of men and her interest in the printing process as the orphans ask her to come with them to see it. One of them touches her the same way her abuser did, so she accidentally lashes out at an orphan boy when asked to come see the studio. Mine decides to use stencil printing instead of woodblock printing. She then asks Wilma to work on simplifying her design and later the orphans tell her about Wilma's recent odd behavior and plead with Mine to help her. Mine asks Ferdinand to read through her manuscript for the children's Bible to make sure the content is okay to print. When he reads it, he immediately becomes suspicious of how easily she was able to synopsize the complicated language of the scriptures into accessible, kid-friendly prose. He calls her to his hidden room and asks about her education and where she got her ideas as he believes that she's not from this country and also points out that months before she was struggling a little bit with the language in their first lecture. Mine replies that she can only say she saw it in a world of dreams to which she can never return which makes Ferdinand tell her that she's a terrible liar and that you will come around this at another time. Wilma finishes the picture. 
To Mine's surprise, she joins them in the studio to see the book completed, as well as help conquer her fear of men and Mine supports her saying that no man will be near her as long she's with Rosina and her. Together, the Grey Priests and Orphans print, drive, fold, and assemble the books and Mine brings them home to Thule who puts the finishing touches on them by binding all the pages together and teaching the orphan children to sew the books. Finally, two years after arriving in the new world, Mine created her first book which moves Mine to tears Let's cheers her up telling her that she should make more books to which Mine replies that enough books to fill all the libraries of this world and make even more libraries. Time moves and now Mine is as always headed to the library. On the way, she encounters a blue robed priest loyal to the high priest. Mine peacefully steps aside to avoid conflict as he's going to the harvest festival through the noble's door, but before he goes, he says, I shouldn't bother at all. However, when she arrives at the library, she is infuriated to find that it has been ransacked, and she guesses that the blue priest was to blame. Furious, she tries to persecute the noble to take revenge, but Fran, fast thinking, starts and drags her unwillingly and heads to the head priest's office to consult with him before she does anything rash. Mine is furious, so furious, that she's breathing like a bull. Initially, Ferdinand tells Mine that she can do nothing about it because the nobles will be off at the Harvest Festival, in which they have to take all of the goods and tributes. Then Mine has a brilliant idea, to reorder the whole library so she's back in good humor. She and her retainers go to the library and start to order the books by the NDC, Nihon Decimal Classification, which rearranges books by their content and use and has nine divisions, general, history, philosophy, social sciences, natural sciences, technology, industry, arts, language, and literature. After seeing this, Ferdinand gives her a table that contains all the books he donated to the church, like a catalog that could help mine. At the library, she and her retainers order the whole library, but she realizes that a lot of the books that Ferdinand donated weren't there because she explicitly makes space for magic books. She asks Ferdinand about it, and he brings her to his hidden room where he presses her about the organization system she used. She tells him about Melville Dewey and the Dewey Decimal System, perplexing Ferdinand, who has never heard of either. He then explains that magic books are the exclusive domain of nobles who have graduated from the Royal Academy. Mine is dismayed to learn that, a mere blue priestess, she is not allowed to read them. She begs him to read them and jumps, but he still refuses. Lutz and Tuli visit the orphanage and help teach the orphans how to make books. Later, Mine and Lutz bring one of the first copies of the children's Bible to Benno, who immediately wants to begin to sell them for profit, but Mine refuses since she wants to create actual literature books to sell, but doesn't have the right tools yet so he tells her that they will construct them if that's what it takes. As the winter months approach, Mine intends to work from home and create accessories for the orphanage, but Ferdinand reveals that the annual temple dedication ceremony occurs during winter and requires a vast amount of mana to complete. As such, he denies her request to live at home and orders her to stay at the temple, something that concerns her since she wanted to be with her family. She also brings him a copy of her newly printed book. Ferdinand, who for the first time understands what printing means and the impact it is likely to have on society, reflects on the danger Mine could present if allowed to continue unchecked. Though Ferdinand holds firm on requiring Mine to stay at the temple, he offers the concession that her family can come to visit to check on her. She then tells the news to her family at first Gunther is angry about it but he finally agrees when Mine remembers him that they accepted all their demands for their mana and when the mana is needed she has to be there if she wants to keep her word and follows it with her responsibilities for the children of the orphanage. While preparing for a new picture book at the temple, Fran informs Mine that she needs to prepare for the Knight's Order, a group from the nobles' quarter of Irenfest, by memorizing the necessary prayers and completing her ceremonial robes. During a meeting with a newly returned Ferdinand from the Harvest Festival, he suddenly receives a message from a magic bird that went through the window that the Knight's Order requires immediate assistance with a raid and a blessing from a priest so Ferdinand orders Fran to prepare Mine to the event. Fran goes super fast to prepare the other retainers which surprise Mine as she didn't see this part of Fran and is curious about what is happening. Also, Fran tells Mine to not make any face with the nobles to prevent any of them injury her. Once dressed, Mine meets with Ferdinand, who is dressed in Knight's armor to fight alongside the Knight's order. He gives her a magic ring which also makes Mine surprised and Ferdinand asks her to not act surprised over every little thing, and they pass through the main gate of the cathedral to the to the nobles' quarter. Greeted by the Knight's Order Captain Karstedt, the group flies away to take on a massive rampaging Tron, and that surprises Mine as she thinks that Tron was a little thing that Lutz and company always killed with ease. Then Mine is given two guards, Damuel and Shikikoza, to protect her as she prays for the Knight's safety. As they fly off to battle, Shikikoza suddenly mocks Mine's prayer as useless and sneers at her, which makes Mine uncomfortable. Shikikoza criticizes Mine for wasting her mana on a useless blessing, but Damuel comforts her by saying that her prayer will aid in the battle, 
Determined not to cause a stir, Amon apologizes to Shikikoza and he lets it go. The Night Order begin their assault on the Trom, using mana-infused weapons to inflict heavy damage. Damuel explains how the weapons work, assuring that they first have to shoot arrows at Trom, and then they could eliminate it using swords and axes. Mine also admires Ferdinand's skill in combat. He says that he wishes Ferdinand could rejoin the Night Order, but then apologizes for saying so and asks Mine to keep it to herself. As the battle turns in the knight's favor, Shikikoza reprimands Damuel for being so friendly with the commoner. Damuel is shocked to learn that the blue shrine maiden he's been talking to is a commoner. Although Mine tries to apologize, Shikikoza pushes her and Fran who is trying to save her and grabs her hair, and then threatens to gouge out her eyes with a knife. Damuel attempts to intervene, but Damuel is forced to stand down due to his lower rank and how it is gonna affect him. Seeing Ferdinand in the sky behind Shikikoza, Mine calls out for help, causing him to accidentally cut her with his knife. When her blood hits the ground, a second trom appears and wraps itself around her. Fran rushes to her aid, and Damuel begins trying to cast a blessing on his weapon to save her, but it's useless as the power of Mine's mana is strong as Mine struggles. She calls out to Lutz with her mind, and her ring sends the image of Mine to him, worrying him. Ferdinand arrives, but his weapons do not affect the trom because her blood is feeding the plant's growth. He dismisses his weapon, heals her wound, and has the rest of the knights chop down the plant without harming Mine, needing three times to attack the plant to succeed. Frame recovers Mine while she's having a fever, so Ferdinand gives her a recovery potion to regain her lost mana, which makes her feel lighter and lots better. An open interrogation occurs to figure out what happened. Shikakoza refuses to defend himself, saying there is no need for a noble to justify his treatment of a commoner. Damuel hesitates to give his testimony since Shikakoza outranks him. However, Mine asks Ferdinand and Karstedt if they can guarantee her safety if she provides honest testimony. Damuel apologizes for failing to help her and Mine is relieved that he finally talked. As the highest ranking knight is present, Ferdinand issues his verdict. He says that everyone must remember their place in society and that by failing to protect Mine as ordered, the knights defied the will of the Lord of Arenfest himself and that both guards are going to be punished for their crimes. As the Knight Commander, Karset is also held responsible for their failure. As they fly to the center of the crater, Ferdinand asks Mine to put her full power into the ritual and says he has a plan to set her up for success to demonstrate that she is not a mere commoner. As punishment for Shikikoza's failure, Ferdinand orders him to lead the healing ritual and restore the land to demonstrate who is superior to whom. When he fails to do so, Ferdinand rips off the staff and orders Mine to attempt the ritual. She succeeds far beyond anyone's expectations, even Ferdinand's who orders her to stop as she replenished the land a little too much. As the Knight's order regards her in shock, he warns them that she is under his custody and protection. As they return to the city of Erenfest, Ferdinand apologizes for allowing her to come to harm under his supervision and how she was exposed to the malice of this world. Mine spends several days bedridden after her strenuous adventure and returns to the temple at the end of the fall. Ferdinand calls her to his hidden room to talk about something. He gives her a red potion to drink, which she finds sweet, and then places a tire on her head. As she falls into a deep sleep, he thinks that he needs to see what is in her mind to determine whether she is a danger to society, so he uses the magic tool to explore her memories. Then we see Mine's memories and Ferdinand explains to her what is happening, so when she realizes what's happening, she enthusiastically takes him on a tour of her memories showing him her past as Urano Motosu, her fond memories of books in the other world, and her life with her family in Japan. He at first thinks that is a noble district from another country, but she declares that is not, and when they go to the library, Ferdinand couldn't believe that the library was filled with books and now understands why Mine was so eager to read. Then they go to Mine's old home as Mine relives her troubled relationship with her mother in her past life and feels regret for failing to appreciate her family. Her emotions become overwhelming as she wants to apologize to her mother since she misses her dearly. Because Ferdinand is synchronized with her emotions, he is forced to break off the connection and return to the present. When Mine wakes up, she sees him looking distressed. She hugs him tightly and thanks him for allowing her to connect with the memories she was starting to forget, for being able to see her mother once last time, and also for relieving her feelings as she is too vulnerable. She then asks Ferdinand to use the tool another time to eat her mother's food, but Ferdinand denies it and took the tire away. Later, Ferdinand meets with Karstedt and discusses the memories he saw through the magic tool. He comments that Mine has immeasurable value to a Renfest and asks Karstedt to adopt her to protect her from any potential threats as she can bring an era of prosperity to a Renfest with a good support supportive environment. Back home, Mine thanks each member of her family for being there for her. She reflects that while she can't go back to her old life and appreciate everything her mother did for her, she still has a chance to appreciate her family in this world. The next day, Mine returns to the temple to have a music lesson with Rosina, while Gil and the orphans create new books. When they return to the temple, Ferdinand asks Mine what demands she has for reparations. She asks for a new set of ceremonial robes from the Gilberta company since hers were damaged and asks Karstedt to be lenient to Damuel. 
the noble knight who tried to help her. As she leaves the temple and heads home, she is met by Lutz who heard her calling out for help when she was trapped by the Trong. As he hugs her, she bursts out crying since she thought she would die that day. Later, she visits Benno's place who reprimands her because a high-ranked noble asks them to make her a garment and she rushes out of the place to stop Benno's rampage and heads to the church accompanied by Lutz while talking about making more books while everyone is working hard and happy in the church. Autumn arrives in Erenfess and Mine continues her duties at church. Now she had to sell her books since she was running low on money and she felt like she sold her soul to a demon. At the moment of introducing the book to the guild, Freida appeared and after a warm salutation, she offered to also buy the book, triggering a merchant fight. On her way back from the merchant's guild, the young blacksmith Johan chases after her, and in public he kneeled to mine and pleaded with her to become his patron. Then in Gilberta's company, he explains that to become a recognized blacksmith, he needs a patron who will vouch for his work. Unfortunately, mine is the only client he's ever had who isn't put off by his highly detailed approach. Mine agrees to sponsor him as a patron if he can successfully create metal letter types for a printing press. Benno also agrees to co-sign the sponsorship and Johan accepts the challenge. That evening, Mine returns home to her family. Tuli and her mother are sewing new undergarments for her to wear at the cathedral, and her father brings home seasonal tanny nuts as a treat pampering Mine as a little child which Mine doesn't resist and also expresses her love to her family with a lot of devotion. Also, Mine's scripture picture books are beginning to sell to wealthy merchants who do business with nobles and the unusual ink used in them attracts the attention of the ink guildmaster, who starts searching for Mine. Somehow, Benno got the news and warned Mine about the reunion of that day so he tells her to hide with Corinna to prevent her identity from getting known. To avoid unnecessary business conflict, Benno and Mine agree to stop producing ink and sell the rights to their method to the ink guild through a magic contract. But that's not enough because they wanted to see the child who allegedly knew others' methods to produce ink so in an afternoon a mysterious man almost kidnapped Lutz, confusing him as the child who knew the methods. This alerts everyone and Benno suggests Mine to start living in the cathedral until spring for safety reasons. Mine reluctantly agrees and says her goodbyes to her family at the cathedral. She begins living in the orphanage director's quarters with her grey-robed priest retainers, Gil Delia, Rosina, and Fran. Fran warns her not to reveal too much about her circumstances to Delia, who still associates closely with the high priest. Elsewhere, the Ink Guildmaster meets with an unfamiliar man and receives payment for an unknown request. Mai begins her winter stay at the cathedral, where she is still kept near her quarters for her safety. When she teaches Delia arithmetic because she asks since Gil is terrible at doing it, Fran is startled to learn that she plans to open a classroom at the cathedral to teach the orphans how to read and write. Every retainer is confused since a grey robe must teach them. They replied and Mine accepts that she couldn't but she still wants to open the classroom. Mine is excited to see Lutz when he comes to visit, and she works with him to create a design for some board games. After he leaves, Gil offers to hug her as Lutz does, but is sternly reprimanded by Fran. Tuli visits shortly after and tells Mine bedtime stories, but Mine feels even more homesick after she leaves. After the first snowfall of the year, Mine arranges to have Benham deliver her new ceremonial robes while Karsted is visiting the temple. During the meeting with Benno, the head priest, and Karsted, the knight Damuel also arrives. He pays for part of the cost of the robes as his punishment for the trauma incident. After Mine receives permission to sell her board games, Karsted, Benno, and the head priest discuss the danger presented by Wolf, the head of the Ink Guild. Benham explains that Wolf is a dangerous individual with ties to the nobility, and suggests his aim may be to kidnap her, sell her to a noble, or force her into a devouring submission contract. The head priest explains that Damuel has been demoted to an apprentice knight and will serve as Mine's bodyguard for the next year as part of his punishment. He also tells Mine how much danger she is in from predatory nobles, and outlines his plan to have her adopted by Karstet for her protection. However, Mine is frightened and dismayed at the prospect of leaving her family and flatly refuses. She panics and loses control of her devouring, forcing the head priest to use a keystone to drain her mana. When the keystone is insufficient, he relents and hugs her to calm her down. Although Mine remains reluctant to leave her family, the head priest insists that she must be adopted by a noble by the time she turns 10 years old since children older than 10 cannot enroll in the Royal Academy. He also warns her that if she loses control of her mana again, she will be put down before she can endanger anyone around her. Mine introduces Damuel to her retainers and Delia is excited to have a high nobleman Mir but Damuel denies it as he states that he is a lower noble which disappoints Delia. At the same time, Mine is happy since Tuli enrolled in her school to learn how to write and read along with other kids. Samuel is presented to all the other grey robes and he is a little uncomfortable as he never had to act like the one with higher status. Meanwhile, Delia reports to the high priest but she's continued to be ignored. The spring ceremony arrives in the hallway. Mine encounters the high priest who still despises her with all his might. For the time being, Mine has to go to the chapel to do the preparations for spring with Ferdinand, 
which consisted in praying to fill a bunch of golden goblets with manna. Days happened, and both of them continued to pray. One of those days, the high priest came into the picture and asked mine to fill a bunch of cups by the Lord's orders, but Ferdinand didn't believe it because they already finished their duty. Also, Rosina came to age and finally had to pick up her hair for traditions. Meanwhile, mine went to Gilberta's company alongside Fran and Damuel, who was new to the smell of downtown. Johan finally finished Mine's request, and she was so excited that started talking about her world and gave Johan the title of Gutenberg, which made Benno and Lutz a little jealous, but Mine gave them the title as well by saying that everyone who contributed the construction of the printing is a Gutenberg. Now, Ferdinand and Mine are discussing the Ink Guild incident as Ferdinand informs Mine that Wolf was found dead this morning and every business he had disappeared as well. This made Mine tremble with fear, as the people who killed the Ink Guild master would probably be nobles that had no fear of killing people. With this came an appointment with Mine's parents for an important meeting. At the meeting, Ferdinand explains the situation of Mine, who has a vast mana and knowledge which noble people would want to exploit for their benefit. So he proposes that Mine would be adopted by Karsted, who is a responsible noble and also kind-hearted. At first, Gunther denies it and doesn't accept it being F for the one responsible enough to accept it argument that the head priest is a responsible person, and all this time took care of Mine properly so if it has to be it, so be it. Ferdinand then tells them that when Mine turns 10 years old, they have to say goodbye to her. After finishing the reunion, Ferdinand scolded Damuel for believing that he did not fault Mine's incident, resulting that everything happened because of his incompetence and absurd fear of moving because he is a lesser noble. Later, while in a reunion with Mine, a mysterious blue robe priest appeared and started to tease Mine. The teasing continues and worsens when Solister grabs her hairpin that Tuli and Effa made for her, making Mine angry and changing her color eyes and freeing Mana. Ferdinand and Castet acted fast and hit the grown man and following this incident, Ferdinand grabs Mine and treated her unleashed mana, while Castet asks Sylvester to go to play with Damuel as he won't break as easily as Mine. Of this, Mine tells Damuel to stay far from Sylvester, which Damuel agrees. Next, the preparations for the spring prey began as the group has to go over the towns to pray for the harvest and abundance of each one. Mine assigns Rosina and Fran to be her retainers at that time. Later, Mine has to go flying with Damuel to each town. While Sylvester made a spectacular entrance impersonating every villager they had to pray and Mine has to touch a golden goblet and pray for the town's harvest, repeating the same thing town by town until they reach a noble's house as they have to do it for them too because of the taxes. As they're in there, Fran tells Mine that her cooks refuse to be helped at all and that they cooked her favorite meals. At dinner, Sylvester tells Mine that her food smelled great and Ferdinand had to translate it to, he wants to eat your food, which Mine makes Sylvester feel bad about stealing the whole plate from a poor commoner. As they finish the dinner, Sylvester proposes Mine to interchange chefs, but she refuses, as they are going to be restaurant chefs, and if he likes the food a lot, he should patron the restaurant, which Sylvester accepts. After it, they enjoy the rest of the night by demonstrating their skills to each other and go to sleep after it. In the morning, they have a reunion as Ferdinand informs Mine that that night some burglars tried to sneak in in search of her, but they mistakenly entered Castet's room and persecuted them. They could catch one, but the other one exploded along with his horse. Mine suggests that maybe the lord of this domain would be the one at fault for it, but Castet denied it as they're his family, and they would never endanger his company, but also that if they were, they would never have entered a ramen room and probably would go straight to the servant's room in the mansion where she slept that night. After it, they went to another noble's mansion, and on the way, Ferdinand ordered Mine to cover herself to protect her identity. In the noble's mansion, they are received by the mysterious noble who took quite an interest to see Mine and was delighted with the fact that they would probably be going to stay there, but Ferdinand tells him that they are not staying there, they're staying in another mansion, which makes the noble a little disgusted. On their way back home, the carriage where Fran and Rosina travels is under an attack by farmers in strange mana, but thankfully, Due to Sylvester's action, cast its attack, and Mines with Ferdinand's prayers, they dismissed the attacks and saved them. Because Mine used too much mana, she finally says that she's out of mana, shocking Ferdinand. At night, Mine recovers in a tent while Rosina takes care of her, and Ferdinand orders explicitly her not to talk while recovering. Also, she learns that they couldn't catch the culprits because of the strong attack made by Castet. The same night, Ferdinand allowed Mine to be with their parents, and the next morning, Effa finally gives birth to her younger brother, Camille. At the church, Fran and Rosina thanks Mine for saving their life as another blue priest would let them die at that moment because the farmers' lives are more valuable to the land than theirs. During the spring prayer, there were new accommodations in the kitchen, such as new orphans' girls helping Mine's chef. Then Sylvester took an interest in seeing what Mine's studio had to offer, the orphanage and the forest activities, and Mine provided a tour of the studio. Sylvester was amazed by the cleanliness of the orphanage and with the things Mine's studio made, but also disappointed as he is far more interested in toys than paper making. 
As they're in the printing part, Sylvester took Benno apart for interrogation as Ferdinand openly states that he wants to talk with Mine later. Next to Benno's interrogation, he scolds Mine as he didn't expect a noble being his patron of the restaurant promptly to open by picking her cheeks. Later, Sylvester hunts an enormous prey for the orphans to feed them, captivating the young public. At his departure, he gifts Mine a necklace that has a charm of protection for an emergency, and that if she has one, he will be there to rescue her, making Mine blush. The next day, Ferdinand talks with Mine in the private room, saying that this will revolutionize the world and prohibit Mine from printing more books as nobles gain a life selling books, and that it will make more nobles resent her and try to kidnap her. Also remembers that when she turns 10, she will not be able to see her family anymore, so he also proposes her to start staying with her family right now, which makes Mine happy. The high priest is plotting against Mine to kidnap her along with the nobles such as Shikosa's mother. They plan to buy her from the high priest whose name is Bezuance and take revenge on Ferdinand. While on a walk to Benno's place, Mine talks about how tiny is her brother. At Gilberta's company, Mine talks about her little brother and Benno tells her that Corinna already gave birth, but Mine notices that he's not excited at all. Benno replies that all the excitement went with Otto as he is happy like three people also tells her that she has an appointment with the ink makers of the ink guild. A few days later, a newborn arrived at the church and no one knows what to do because there were no nurses or midwives around, so Mine proposes that everyone will take care of the child, especially Delia who is going to become his older sister of him, naming him Dirk as it sounds similar to her name. Even when she was searching for advice to the head priest, he doesn't know what to do as they never have received a newborn, so he suggests making her retainers take turns to take care of the baby. Also, the head priest permitted Mine to only print picture books, so at home, Mine promises to print tons of picture books for her little brother to him to remember her. The appointment of the Ink Guild arrives and they meet. The man whose name is Beers openly declares that he doesn't want to be head of the Ink Guild, as it's a demanding job. As the reunion progresses, they state that they want Benno to take over the Guild as another person would monopolize the Ink, but also to work with Mine to make more ink, especially Heidi, who is excited to work with her even when Mine proposes a price for her knowledge. With that in mind, Mine proposes to make colored ink. They immediately are dragged on their sits by both of their guardians, and later Heidi and her father have to go, but Benno tells Lutz that he now has to take care of two Mine, and Lutz says that he already is hands full with one. The next afternoon, they reunited with Heidi and his husband Joseph to try some colors for their ink, but Mine's expected mixes had other colors, and that left Mine worried, as she won't know what colors expect. Next to that, she's going to to buy Gil his new writing board. Elsewhere, Delia is reporting to the high priest that Mine has a new little brother, but he doesn't care and kicks her out of his chambers without a reward. So she goes to the kitchen for Dirk's milk, but when she is with him, he realizes that the baby has a fever, but also red dots all over his little body worrying her to death. Mine is checking Dirk because all of her retainers told her that Dirk has a sudden fever and red dots over his body, but when Mine goes to check on him, everything is normal. Delia tells Mine that that happens when Dirk is hungry, so they wait until it's his time to eat. During his nursing time, Dirk starts crying and effectively he starts with a fever and red dots which makes Mine worried, and orders Fran to get Lutz and make an appointment with Ferdinand. When Lutz arrives, she tells him to bring her tough fruit. In Ferdinand's appointment, she directly asks for a private conversation, so they use the magic items. Mine states that Dirk maybe has the devouring, which Ferdinand explains that Dirk has to be given on adoption as he would die because of the sickness. So the next morning, they're going to measure Dirk's mana, and it resulted in middle-class mana level. Ferdinand asks Mine how many people know about Dirk's devouring, and well, she replied, no, he orders her to keep his secret as the high priest would take advantage of it because he doesn't have how to defend himself. Later, Mine proves the colored ink they made, but when dry and mixed, it turns gray. Frustrated at home, Mine tells them what happened with the ink to her mother, and Effa replied that they should use fix agents to maintain the colors of the ink. In Haspel's classes, Rosina laughs at Mine because she has a vast knowledge about things but forgot the crucial thing of painting that are the fix agents. Meanwhile, they're on the lessons. Mine looks at Delia taking care of Dirk and realizing she bonds with him and smiles cutely at him. Wilma arrives to take care of the baby and leaves with him to the orphanage which makes Delia worry about him, but her past doesn't let her become near that place. Later, Mine orders Fran and Rosina to rest, and when she's going to the orphanage alone, Damuel stops her and tells her she needs an escort to go out. For casualties, Delia arrives and Damuel orders her to accompany Mine to the orphanage. Delia fights with herself even when they're there and doesn't enter until she notices that Dirk is going to roll off the cradle, and she catches him scolding everyone for not attending him. Later, when Mine goes back to her chambers, she listens to Delia and Fran discussing, and then Delia confronts Mine about Fran telling her that Dirk's is going to be given on adoption, and the head priest told that he couldn't find any noble wanting to adopt him. Delia confronts Mine and grabs her aggressively demanding she explains herself, but Fran moves away from Delia. Delia says that the head priest likes to rip apart families, including Mine's. 
Mai then told her that she was the one who offered Dirk adoption as he could get a better life meanwhile she could take care of Dirk, which makes Delia happy. Somewhere Heidi tries to sneak in the artist guild to get some information about maintaining the color of the ink, but is trapped and her husband, Joseph, has to rescue her as the guild's people are enraged by this act. Walking home, they encounter Mine and company who wants to test again the ink making. As they test the ink with the fix agent, they realize the ink's color is intact, celebrating everyone except Heidi, who wanted to see why the color changes depending on the oil mine proposes she funds their research by the condition that she has to meet the deadlines on time or she is going to cut the money. Then mine goes to Johan, who now is called Gutenberg, to order a toy. On the way, they see a red flash going to the sky that being the signal for the knights and Damuel grabs mine to let her in her house for security while he goes to attend the summon. Later, Gunther arrives. He explains that some of the town nobles tried to get in with false documentation. And because there was an explicit order from the lords not to let anybody in while he was traveling, they didn't let him in, so they had to summon the knights as they can't hurt nobles. Gunther then warns mine about her surroundings as now the time is dangerous. Meanwhile, the high priest is having a rage attack, even injuring his retainers and making a mess of his chambers. Going back to Mine, Mine is with Thule and the product she ordered from Johan was a jingle bell for a toy Lutz makes fun of Mine since her little brother always cries when he sees his face. Eventually, Ferdinand, Damuel, and Fran have a reunion about the noble that tried to sneak in and wanted to see Mine, so he orders them to stay cautious in these times. After five days, Mine was allowed to go back to the cathedral and there Rosina and Fran informs her that Dirk was adopted by an outsider and that the outsider didn't need permission from the Lord to adopt him. Also, they advise Mine to fire Delia as her retainer since she couldn't keep her mouth shut about the boy and also that she always tells the high priest everything she does, so she can't be trusted. This worries Mine as she believed that Delia wanted to be with Dirk. Next, Mine reunions with Delia to talk about the matter and Delia shows no remorse, so Mine dismisses her as her retainer and questions herself about why a noble would want Dirk as his son. Mine is troubled as she thought Delia would have changed. But Fran assures her that this is for her security and informs her that the high priest was involved in the gate incident as well so begs her to be cautious and safe. Eventually, Mine has to go out and finds that Thule and Lutz have come for her. On their way home, Thule is a little sad since Mine explained to her that for Damuel means are more people to protect, so she needs to stay at home. They ran into Otto who informs them that some airhead didn't receive the information about the noble with false documentation and they let the noble in the city so they're searching for him. This enrages Damuel who sends a signal to summon the knights and Mine is worried, but suddenly she and Thule are kidnapped by two burglars. Gunther arrives and catches the thug that has Mine and tackles him, but when Mine falls on the floor and finally is free, the other thug puts a knife in Thule's neck, threatening her life. With this, Mine goes berserk and uses her magic to asphyxiate the thug and seizing the opportunity, Gunther throws a knife through his shoulder and Thule is finally free to go. Then they fight the thugs until they are eventually defeated. Seeing these times of danger, Mine uses the necklace that Sylvester gifted her and uses her blood to call him for help. They go to the Gilberta's company to leave Thule and Lutz in the care of Benno, while Gunther, Damuel, and Mine go back to the cathedral. Meanwhile, Fran founds out that the head priest isn't there and for some reason, Delia says that the adopter of Dirk wants to speak with Mine. At Mine's chamber, the group arrives and Fran informs them that the head priest isn't in the cathedral and also Damuel reveals that he couldn't contact Ferdinand at all. So they try to sneak out of the cathedral to put Mine safe and Damuel gifts Mine a ring of the thugs for her defense. While sneaking out, they see the noble in the company of the high priest Dilia and the high priest's retainer. They eventually catch up and the noble wants Mine to be her servant, which shocks Delia as they reveal that Dirk's contract is about slavery, sucking his mana until he eventually dies. This is what the outsider wants for Mine, so when she resists, the noble calls his fighters and a fight starts. On the fight, noticing the danger, Mine fights with the noble, but because the ring was his servant one, she couldn't damage her master. Even though they use the baby as a human shield for her to stop, the high priest retainer drags her by force and tells her that she was a flower-giving servant and that Rosina and Wilma weren't, and because it was unfair, it won't be unfair to Mine to become a servant. They try by force putting Mine's blood to seal the contract, but fortunately, Gunther tackles both Retainer and Noble and tries to run with Mine to safety, but he is attacked by the Noble, injuring him. Mine decides that that's enough and goes berserk again and breaks her servant ring due to her abundance of mana. The High Priest thought that a stone that absorbs mana would neutralize Mine, but the stone was useless as it broke apart in pieces. Ferdinand arrives just in time to see the mess, and the High Priest tries to convince him that it was Mine's fault and that she needs to be executed. Ferdinand explains to Mine that she attacked a noble so her family and every attendant will be executed by the laws of this nation. 
Mine apologizes to her dad, but her dad replies that when she entered the church, he was ready to die for her at any moment. At that moment, Mine shows her necklace and says out loud that Sylvester was a liar. Ferdinand took a look and explained to her that indeed is an effective protection charm, but not for protection itself, instead to become Sylvester's daughter right now. Gunther tries to stop it, but Mine tells him that she doesn't want her family to be endangered anymore, so she eventually accepts the fate. By that means, Ferdinand ties with Magic the High Priest and tells the other one, that he will not hesitate only because he's a noble revealing that he is a noble too, and also one that went to the Royal Magic Academy. They put into a fight, while Ferdinand orders Mine to pray to the Wind Goddess for protection, which she did making a shield. Ferdinand wins the battle, throwing the nobleman to the wall. Sylvester and Casta arrive and demand to know what is going on with his uncle, the High Priest. Also, the nobleman demands to know who he is and Castit steps in front and introduces Abba Renfest, the lord of these lands, which shocks Mine into oblivion as she thought of him as an annoying blue priest and everyone kneels before him, Gunther asks Mine to do so. Elsewhere, Lutz tells Benno what's going on and that black stone and Benno rushes into his chambers saying that is too soon for that. Going back to the cathedral, the nobleman asks Sylvester to punish Mine as she attacked a noble, but Sylvester dismisses it as Mine now as his adoptive daughter, shocking him to the core, and orders his capture for his crimes, which Ferdinand gladly does so. The high priest demands his nephew to stop this madness and not adopt Mine as she is a troublemaker and only will drag disgrace to his family like Ferdinand, who is the illegitimate son of Sylvester's father. Sylvester feeds up and tells him that he no longer will recognize him as his uncle, and he will be degraded by all his titles because of this incident, and also will receive punishment. The knights escort the culprits and Sylvester explains that everyone will possibly be executed as they injured the Lord's daughter, while Delia is about to go she gives Dirk to Mine and says her to take care of him. Mine having flashbacks about how Delia needed her when she was a child, asks Sylvester to at least let Delia out of this as she was deceived. So Sylvester tells her that because she now is his daughter, she could decide the punishment, which Mine does and decides that Delia no longer will be a retainer or a maid, and that she will be in the orphanage forever taking care of the children and Dirk. Delia expresses her gratitude to Mine as she goes. Sylvester goes to Gunther and orders him to gather all his family to terminate the adoption documentation. Gunther does so and searches Tuli and Effa with Camille. Lutz wants an explanation of what happened, but Gunther tells him that he will do it when they come back. At the Cathedral, Sylvester explains that they will be no longer a family of mines and that he considered killing them, but that only will mine sad and go berserk until they have to kill her. Tuli at first didn't want to become a stranger to mine, but mine explains to her that she doesn't want her family to be killed or her mother to be kidnapped at her fault. Also, Sylvester tells them that he considered closing Benner's shop, but he won't as it could be the center of the industry revolution. So Sylvester orders Mine to read the contract conditions which were, it will be no longer Mine's family and they can't refer to her as family, they won't be able to keep in touch with her, and also they have to say that Mine died. The family embraces the inevitable and starts to say her departure beginning with Tuli, that states that Mine will be always her younger sister, Effa that tells her to take care, not to do trouble, and be as careful and brilliant as she is. Mine also wants to carry Camille for the last time and promises him to create millions of books for him to read finally Gunther. Mine tells him that he always is going to be her father and that if she has the chance of marrying someone like him, she will. Mine tells all of her dear family that she loves them dearly and will love them until the end of her life. They sign but before Mine signs, she starts to unleash her mana and everyone orders her to stop but she refuses, as she wants to say the final blessing for her family and the people she dear the most. She first blesses them for their health, healing Gunther, Damuel, and Fran. Then she prays for their safety as she wants them to be safe on any occasion and finally for their abundance, to have lots of food and money to be happy in their life. Finishing their blessing, she finally signs the contract and Sylvester then announces that they're in front of Rosemane, his daughter. Her previous family kneels in departure wishing her health and to be happy while Mine wishes to see them again while crying. Some time passes and Mine is officially dead. Lutz by Benno's orders starts to work again to make tons of books to honor her. Meanwhile, Rosamine is with his adoptive father and uncle who tells her to start the new industry and make tons of books which she gladly will do so. 